Okay. The first question is a complete figure 1.1 indicate whether each quantity is vector or scalar. So acceleration. Remember, acceleration is always along the direction of force. So acceleration is a vector quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity. Power is also a scalar quantity. Now, a ball is projected with a horizontal velocity of 1.1 meters per second from point A at the edge of the table, as, as shown. The ball lands on a horizontal ground point B, which is distance 0 0.40 meter from the base of the table. A resistance is negligible. So this is very important. This makes question easy. Remember, whenever examiner will give you a question, the... hello, sorry. Mubashar, did you say something? So calculate the time taken for the ball to uh, fall from A to B. Listen, if this distance is given and this velocity is given, I hope you remember when object goes like this and there is no air resistance, nothing happens to the horizontal velocity. The horizontal velocity stays same all along. So if an object is traveling 1.1, meter per second, how long will it take to travel for 0.43 meters? Formula is uh, time equals to distance divided by speed. So 0 0.43 divided by 0. Point, uh, sorry, 1.1. So is it 0 0.39 or something? Point four three divided by one point one zero point three nine one. Zero point three nine seconds. Use your uh, answer in B one to determine the height of the table. Now remember uh, for height, because it is a vertical distance like this, yes, this is height. For height, we will take the vertical stuff. Distance travel will be height. Initial speed will be zero. Acceleration equals to G equals to 9.81. And time to fall will be 0 0.391 second as we have calculated in the previous part. So let's start. If U is zero, a equals to G equals to 9.81, P equals to 0 0.391. And we are looking for distance travel, which is equal to height, or uh, I should say height, which is equal to distance travel equals to question mark. So what formula should I use? If you remember, there is a formula that, that works without the final velocity that is uh, S equals to UT plus half AT squared. And if U is zero, the formula is height equals to one over two AT squared. So zero, one over two into 9.81 into 0 0.391 square. 0.5 into 9.81 into, oops. 5 into 8.1 into 0 0.391 square equals to 0 0.74988. So in two significant figures, it would be 0 0.75. Meters. Now. Moving on. The ball leaves the table at t equals to zero. For the motion of the ball between A and B, sketch the graph 
on one figure 1.3 to show the variation with time for acceleration. First of all, the vertical component SV displacement of the ball. Now, for the motion of the ball between A and B, uh, I, I think this is very straightforward. We have already done that. If we go back down the memory lane, we'll find it here. Do you see the graph for high? Okay, one one difference. In this case, he's not he's not asking for the graph of height against time. He's asking specifically graph of um, distance or displacement from the point of throw. So there will be slight shape, uh, change between uh, the graphs over there. Uh, velocities. Horizontal velocity is this, vertical velocity is increasing, but velocity graph is not required. Acceleration, it stays 9.81 meter per second square for the whole motion. So for the graph of acceleration, I will go for a horizontal line like this because acceleration is not changing. And for displacement, It will be something like this. So, graph of uh, vertical displacement will be like this because vertical displacement will be increasing with an increasing speed. So, this is how the graph should be. The ball of greater mass is projected from the table with the same velocity as the ball in B. A resistance is still ne negligible. State and explain effect, if any, on the increased mass on the time taken of the ball to fall down. there will be no effect. All masses fall with same acceleration. So what you think how many marks would you have got in this question if you have done, if you would have done it yourself putting it recording now <clears throat> define displacement what is displacement Distance traveled from one place to another. No, no, no. That will be distance traveled. You you said distance traveled. Distance in a distance from one place. Yes, yes, yes. Distance from a certain point. Straight distance from a certain point is called displacement. Distance in a particular direction is called. displacement or shortest distance between two points in space displacement. What is acceleration? <clears> the <throat> rate of change of velocity. Good. Rate of 
change of velocity is called acceleration. Now, a remote control car moves up a ramp and travels across a gap to land on another ramp as illustrated in figure. The car leaves the ramp P with a velocity 5.5 meter per second at an angle of theta to the horizontal. The component of car's velocity as it leaves the ramp is 0 0.46 meters per second. The car lands at the top of ramp Q. The tops of both ramps are at the same height. Distance d apart, the resistance is negligible. Very carefully, you, whenever you're reading question, you should read question very carefully. The overall velocity is 4.4. The horizontal component is 4. Point, uh, sorry, uh, total velocity is 5.5. Horizontal component is 4.6. Angle is theta, and distance between the ramp stop is d. Now, show that the car leaves ramp P with a vertical component of three meter per second. Now, there are multiple ways of doing it, but tell me this one. If I tell you that the horizontal component of something is 4.6, Vertical component is something that I don't know. And the resultant of these two is 5.5. What method comes to mind as the easiest one to find the question mark? What would be the easiest way of finding the unknown part or unknown? Uh, vector. Or Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Yes, sir. 5.5 square equals to question mark square plus 4.6 square. 5.5 square minus 4.6 square square root. Five point five square minus four point six square nine point zero Okay, any trouble so far? No, sir. Determine the time taken for the car to travel between the ramps. Okay. This is interesting. The, the car goes up with a velocity of 3.0 meter per second. So obviously, when it lands, its velocity will be minus 3 meter per second. And acceleration will be downward, minus 9.8 meter per second square. So if initial velocity is 3 meter per second, Final loss is minus three. Acceleration is negative 9.81. And we need time. Who can calculate the time? Hello? 
and zero point six. Uh, you, you know, if you give less than two significant figures in your final answer, you lose a mark. One mark for whole paper, whole, whole question paper. So, do you want to reconsider your answer? Yes, sir. Zero point six one seconds. Good. Zero six one second. Now <clears throat> calculate the horizontal distance D between the oh interesting. Now he wants to know how far are the slopes are. So if you pay attention, you can see that he has given you the horizontal velocity. How far are they is exactly how much distance the trolley has traveled. So in this case, D will be equal to horizontal distance equals to speed multiplied by time. So two point eight one. So Calculate the ratio kinetic energy of the car at its maximum height divided by kinetic energy of the car as it leaves the ramp. Whenever you have to find ratios like this, there are two ways of doing, the two easier ways of doing. One is that you find the kinetic energies or whatever they are asking to find with its full formula in the numerator and in the denominator. One over two. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. I'm back. I thought I, I lost the connection sometime. So one over two into mass into speed and, and listen, speed at the maximum height. You know, when the trolley will be at the maximum height, it will only be traveling with the horizontal component of the velocity and, and vertical component should have become zero at the maximum height. But when it is leaving, it is traveling at a speed of 5.5. So kinetic energy doesn't, does not bother what is the direction of the velocity. Kinetic energy has nothing to do with the velocity. Kinetic energy is only considering speed. So direction is irrelevant for kinetic energy. So at the top, it will be 1 over 2 into m into 4.6 square divided by 1 over 2 into same mass, so same m. I don't know what value of m is. And divided by 5.5 square. So I can see half get canceled with half, m gets canceled with m. And what I have to actually find is 4.6 square divided by 5.5 square. So. Forty six divided by fifty five square zero point six nine nine. So zero point seven zero. Zero point seven zero. Now <clears throat> the ramp two is removed. The car again leaves ramp B. 
and now lands directly on the ground. The car leaves P at time T equals to zero and lands on the ground at P equals to capital T. Sketch the graph variation of the time vertical component of the velocity. So it is a two mark question. So uh, vertical component is 4.6. So let's say if it is because uh, now the trolley has to to keep going forward unless it hits the ground like this. So this graph will be like this one. We we did that where the where the object has to land at a at a lower point than it is thrown from. Look, this is the kind of case it is. An object has been thrown from the top of the building and we let it go lower than the point of throw. In that case, the graph of velocity and time is something like this. So this is the kind of graph that we should be expecting. Because it's a two mark question, so we have to be careful about the values. So if this is four, this is eight. So 4.6 will be four point six will be somewhere here. So it will start from here. And this is How much time does it take to come back to the same height? Zero point six. So zero point three second is what it takes to get on the top. So this is zero point two, zero point four, zero point. So the graph should be something like this. So actual point is that we have to make a graph that is more negative than positive. So this is the kind of graph you should be expecting. Kinematics is the, the biggest chapter in your course. Okay. All other chapters are easy to start and easy to finish. Kinematics is the most difficult chapter to finish, you know, because examiner actually wants the student aptitude to be developed to, to the maximum level in this topic. So the only way is you practice more and more past paper and, and come up with the, with the problems if they are there. So have we discussed uh, a resistance and terminal velocity? Yes, we have. And it is pretty much it for kinematics. I think there is nothing in this chapter that we can do further, except that we, we can do practice. So let's start a new chapter. So we will be doing dynamics and uh, let me fix it, vectors and dynamics.
what are vectors? And scalars. So these are two sets of uh, quantities in physics. There are two types of quantities in physics. One are vector quantities, the other is are scalar quantities. Vector quantities, they they do not require uh, they uh, scalar quantities. They do not require any any knowledge of their direction because they don't have any direction. But vector quantities cannot be understood without direction. Look, that is why the first letter V is very much like an arrowhead, and S is like this, like no direction. No. Quantities that require knowledge of the direction for complete understanding are called vector quantities. No, scalar quantities. Quantities that do not require direction only magnitude and unit is required are called scalars. So scalar quantities, they, they do not need any information about their direction. For example, if I, if, if I ask you, what is temperature today? And you tell me that it is 21 or 22 degrees Celsius over there. I will com completely understand what you're telling me. Like, I don't need any further information. Like, I don't need to know, is it 20, 22 degrees Celsius upwards or 22 degrees Celsius downwards or 22 degrees that Celsius along X axis or Y axis or North or South or East or West, that, 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 is, that will not make any sense. I completely understood when you said 22 degree Celsius. Similarly, if you tell me that the mass of a bag of rice is five kg, I will completely understand what you are saying because just five and kg, magnitude and unit, that's enough. That will make complete sense. But what if I ask you, for, for example, if, if uh, you're, you're standing in, on a road and I ask you, where is, where is the, the market from here? For, for example, I'm, I'm on, a, on a bike and you are just standing on the sidewalk. And I ask you, where is the market from here? And you tell me that it is exactly two kilometers from here. Now, uh, you have told me two, which is magnitude. You have told me a unit, which is kilometer, but still I cannot go to the market. I, I need some other information to, to know what you're telling me. This two kilometers, I, I can make a circle if, I, if, if that is possible, but that is not possible in every situation. So you have to add a direction. You can tell me that, Okay, you have to take a U-turn and go back two kilometers, or you can tell me you have to go forward and uh, there is the market or turn right or left, like whatever direction, information about direction is required, you provide me and then I'll be able to go to 
the market. So some quantities require information about their direction. Um, for, for example, if I tell you that there is, a, there is an object which has been engaged by two forces, five Newton and three Newton. Now, there is an object and I'm engaging it with two forces, five Newton and three Newton. What will be the direction of the resultant or, or magnitude of the resultant force? You would say that, uh, you, sir, please provide more information because you cannot tell me what three and five can produce. If they are acting in the same direction, they can produce um, eight. And if they're acting in opposite direction, they can produce two. And believe me, by changing their angle from zero to 180 degree, you can produce all other possibilities like from two to eight. All the possibilities that they are there, are possible to, to produce as a resultant of five and three. So unless I do not tell you the direction they are acting in, there is no way you can find the resultant. So uh, the point is some quantities require information about their direction and some quantities don't. The quantities that require the require information about their direction other than the magnitude and unit, those quantities are called vector quantities. I hope you already know that. Most of it is already known by the student at this level. So let's make a list of five scalars and five vectors. Share your answers in the group, WhatsApp group. And I will be making a list of uh, scalars and vectors by, by making a union of all the answers that you people give. Okay, so right now, start, like you, you can either write them on a paper and take a picture or you can just type them in, uh, five scalars and five vectors. If you want to add more, it is up to you, at least five scalars and five vectors. Hurry up, you have exactly two minutes.